Welcome to our Eat to Win series. My name is Brian Morgan and today I'm going to be discussing portion sizes and how to make some sensible choices that are going to help you achieve your goals. Whether that to be to lose weight, maintain weight, or even gain weight. Uh, some people say, I didn't even think of any of those choices. I just want to generally be healthy. You can see on any angle, the discussion that we're going to go through today is going to, uh, to assist you. Um, I've talked to a couple people in the last couple weeks about this topic and they said, Brian, try not to tell everyone uh, don't have this and don't do this and no, 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 no. Because we've heard that before. I said, you're absolutely right. What we really need to look at is the two main ingredients of portion sizes and that is knowledge and that is control. I believe a lot of people go through their day, whether they're working or not, at the end of the night they're sitting there and saying, I gotta have all these sweets and all these sugars and I want these drinks and so on and so forth. And they say, you know, Brian, and I hear this all the time, Brian, can you teach me how to have more willpower? Can you set up some different things for me so I don't have those? Should I be drinking lots of water at night? Better yet, why don't I just go to bed because I can't control it. So obviously two ingredients I want to teach and to install is knowledge, because I believe without the knowledge on how to better design the, your portions, and uh, without that, you're going to be uncontrollable. I say to the people that ask me, how, how, Brian, can I stop eating at night? I say, well, let's design a day for you of eating and your meals and smaller, more sensible choices that make you feel that you don't need to have those choices at night. And believe it or not, you don't have to go to bed early and you don't have to drink gallons of water so you don't feel like you're hungry. And a lot of people will look at that and say, that's just amazing and I don't believe that. And as they begin and start to work with, with their body and start to give their body the right amount of nutrients, realize their body says, we can do this together. And that's really what we're looking to do. As you look here onto our counter, we have uh, several different plates set up. And hopefully, the first thing you can do is kind of eyeball and see that they're not huge plates the size of this counter. They're small plates. Maybe through the lens of the camera you can't see exactly what's on one of these foods on these plates. And I'm going to help you with that at the same time and give you an idea of how much is in here as well. And that's part of the equation is to teach you that you can have a meal, whether that to be a breakfast or a snack or a lunch or dinner, and it doesn't have to be on a huge gigantic plate. Uh, we oftentimes go out to a restaurant and if the plate is this big, we'll have to eat the entire plate, you know. Uh, and if it's this big, we'll have to eat the entire plate. So, if we have a smaller plate, guess what? We have to believe that we have to eat everything on that plate. So, if we have a smaller plate of food, that's just one simple key ingredient right there that could help you out. Um, but that's it's not as easy as that. We look here right now at a breakfast plate. As you can see, I have a bowl of cereal. What you can see is that on this bowl of cereal, it's not spilling over all over the place. It's actually comfortably placed right into this bowl. I think a lot of people can relate to that and say, oh yeah, it doesn't have to be spilling over and all over the place. That's portion sizes right there, a little tip for cereal. Um, whether it to be any form of cereal, we don't need to have two or three cups pouring over the sides. Uh, an average serving size of cereal is three-fourths to one cup. That's the cereal. The milk itself, again, we don't have to put in two or three cups of milk. Just enough milk to soak into the cereal and make it a little bit more... Uh, appetizing for you. It's always nice for breakfast also to start with the fruit. And I put down a, a banana, uh, whatever fruit that you choose that you want to have, that's nice also. Um, some people start off their days and they obviously have to look at how much do I need today as far as energy or as far as calories. And based on that, it also helps you with your portion sizes. Uh, for example, I eat 3,000 calories a day. So I can have this whole entire banana, which may yield about 115 to 120 calories. Yet somebody that's eating of more of a, around 1,500 calories, half of what I'm having, realistically, they should have half of the serving. Uh, so cutting the banana in half, and then leaving the other part of the banana for another meal. We look here also at an egg. Um, one egg, however prepared about this serving size it's going to come out to be. Uh, this is nice because I've created a meal right here, a plate for breakfast, that has carbohydrates into it, has protein into it, and obviously too with the yolk, it has fat into it. So it's a nice balanced meal and it's not huge. Okay, 
Let's take a look at um, yogurt. You often have yogurt. Um, this right here is an eight ounce serving of plain yogurt. Sometimes you see these small little cups of yogurt, or better yet, you see even twice the size of this container of yogurt. Once again, that goes towards that goal. Uh, how much do you need? And portion size it uh, accordingly. I, I think for the average cups of yogurt that I see out there, uh, I think that's usually enough for almost anybody. You know, you don't have to sit there and open a yogurt and have half of it. Um, yeah, at the same time, though, you don't need two yogurts right there on the spot. It often takes the body, depending on its food, several minutes, if not even 40 minutes, to feel the satiety coming from the meal, to feel fill, full from the meal. So if we're sitting there and having a yogurt and eating extremely, extremely quick, we're probably going to say, what's next? So if we go a little bit slower and have smaller spoonfuls, you're going to realize that that's going to assist you and controlling the amount that you're going to put in your mouth. And that holds true as well as for breakfast. Oftentimes, we get, get up, hit the floor running, so to speak, and we have a breakfast, and some of the times I'm noticing when I'm driving to work, I'm seeing somebody with a bowl of cereal in the car driving at the same time. Kind of hard to portion size at that time and to have a sense of control. So simply, another tip for portion sizes is giving ourselves enough time in advance to sit down and to enjoy our meal and let it truly digest. And again, the body will team up with you, as we said before, and uh, really show you that it can, it can help you out and not be your enemy. But this yogurt right here, it fits nicely between like a breakfast and this is a lunch plate right here, and having a snack. Because we know the body, on average, digest foods within about two to four hours, depending on its size. So if this meal, for example, is at seven o'clock and lunch is at 12 o'clock, not a bad idea to have something like this at around 10 o'clock or so. Uh, that way, when you get to lunch, you don't feel so full that you have to have all this different food. You can once again have a lunch that is on a small plate. We look here and I put a hamburger together. And you know, a lot of people are like, I'm not going to have a hamburger every day. That's not the idea with what we're going with the concept today. It's just a how to portion size it. As once again, you look, you're not going to see meat flying over the sides of the uh, bun. You're not going to see a huge submarine sandwich here at the same time. You'll see one slice of cheese instead of three or four slices of cheese. This is equivalent to one ounce of cheese. The burger I put on here, or let's say you chose turkey, one thing or the other, uh, it's usually three ounces and so a serving size of like a deck of carbs. That would be a nice way to eyeball it. And obviously I put it onto a hamburger bun. So if the ingredients in here was turkey or ham or roast beef, that would be approximately the serving size. And if you were to use deli meat, it's usually around three to four slices, depending on how thick the slice is.